but it come in in the, in the form of new ads actually we are not uh, intend to go through the entire sections uh, section wise uh, classes on all these subjects but only a, a, a contrast of old and the new ads that will alone can be uh, done in this few hours so i am not uh, taking much time in order to provide more time for the classes i conclude and and wish you all a good learning program through this platform thank you <clears throat> i also invite our senior most i coach jet this is momal mustasa to inaugurate this program sir please thank you santosh thank you thangachan uh really good that uh, vijay kumar is uh, as consented to deliver the lectures on this the topics i don't think uh, the end this topic he can cover today maybe a introduction of uh, this three major enactment which as a lawyer we have to deal with a day to day basis going back to school is difficult what you learned in uh, ipc in evidence act criminal procedure code again it's come in a modified version when there is a conflict uh, in while practice then you will have to interpret you have interpreted prove 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 and i mean though it's look very simple uh, in evidence act but when it comes to practice it's very difficult we have seen that there are a lot of decisions come in criminal procedure court but we should admire the quality of uh, legislation which was made by, by the british keeping all this in mind so it is not easy to replace it because it's come to in a practice for a long the society is accepted the legal practice are accepted so parliament also cannot easily replace it in toto because it would be difficult so it will take uh many years to have a round court in a complete form of indian form may yes it may take years by the time there will be a big change in the our societies uh, i mean relationship within the community we have seen that many of the laws which were made uh at the time of the sixth uh, patriarchal society even indian penal code the way in which they defined uh, the rape and other offenses it was not a gender neutral but passage of time we know that society have gone under gone a change and whether um, women could be prosecuted for a rape is a big issue but still the language of the offenses is only a, once the gender Uh, is not a gender neutral there may be a lot of other issues may come in the future as society is fast growing the technology has overtaken many of our field there are issues of uh, uh, i mean uh, in the, in the arising out of metaverse where uh, though you are not a human but you will in a virtual world you also feel, feel the pain like in a human in the real world so there is no physical injury but there will be pain there are cases registered in uk and us and in, in virtual space uh, when women felt that she has been groped or howdar has been groped and she felt that pain there may be some many challenges would will come in the future but what we can as a lawyers to do it in the in the real sense we also need to have a kind of discussions and academic discourses continuous we also need to engage with our parliamentarians law makers and engage ourselves so that we can have a better laws in on the place we it quite easy to criticize but it is not easy to formulate laws we know that many of our legislations we, we found it very difficult to interpret for example small section 138 you know how many decisions how many uh, problems we faced so legislators not not been in a position to comprehend many thing in the ground level the lawyers and judges are only the person who knows the ground level when it is law is uh, put in practice 
Sometimes maybe free field set in 138 matters. That's a, exactly perhaps the Kerala government has brought an amendment to the Code Fees Act because they feel that this being yeah, rather used uh, to uh, subvert a civil remedy and using it as a criminal remedy because someone might have misused to a larger extent because they don't pay the code fee. Maybe that is the reason. We don't know. But I think problem arises when you're practicing because there is no if if in all check cases if there is a law they say that uh, a transaction can be presumed if it is transacted through mode of negotiable instruments if all this medium of transaction has happened through a negotiation there can be a presumption but even if uh, cash has been delivered or it's been said to be delivered in a high volume 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs the presumption is still follow when they make the law, they cannot comprehend these things. They have a one set of mind in the man. They only want to help the trade and commerce people and business people so that get, get, they should get an easy remedy. But in practice, it is found that it's been rather used by those who have one money lenders and all others who want to use it as an instrument to oppress people. So the law sometimes travel beyond the reality. So this is a big problem in the uh, new society, in modern society, we face this. So anyway, anyway, Hylio has taken a good initiative here. This should should be a continuous affair. And I must also say that at least we should engage ourselves. The lawyers should engage with the legislators and speak to them. It's not only in these matters of uh, in penal law or criminal laws, in all the matters. When you are dealing with the land laws, we know that the legislative or government intention is far from the reality. But when law is dealing with these issues, they know it, what is happening in the ground level. So please have a, a good conversation with the lawmakers, involve them, have a deliberation, have a discussions, and that will bring a big change in it. Lawyers should not think that law is only for the purpose of, uh, uh, I mean, for our uh, bread uh, and would use it as a practice. No, as a lawyers, we have a duty. We have a duty to our society. We have a duty to our nation. Engage ourselves with the conversation. That's where the nobility of the noble profession reflects. The nobility is not based on our what we wear in, in a day to day basis, gown or band or this. It is not how far, how are we attached to our society? How are attached to the nation, how are attached to our country's growth, that makes our profession nobility. So this should be only a beginning. Please encourage yourself, whatever the sphere which we are, we are now in the state of Kerala, we cannot travel beyond it. But in within this space, you can very well engage with the legislators. In all the matters, you feel that the law is not that practical. Instead of raising uh, your voices, I've seen that lawyer's body has gone berserk in, against a court fees amendment. But look at the, how the government viewing it. Government looking at it as a different way because the the public in, government, the courts are public institutions. It should spend its time for the public cause. When private cause, which could be, it can be resolved through mediation or other forum, you are using it payment pittance. So government might have seen that that view. I'm not blaming the government, but there may be huge concerns when court fees are raised. That should be discussed with the government rather than raising your voice, going berserk. I don't think that is a good sign of a society. Involve yourself. Have a good deliberation. Have a good discussion with the government, whether it be in a state government or national, I mean, central government. Involve yourself and shed our negative image. I think that's where the big problem with lawyers nowadays. Everything you just look at the negative way rather than looking in a positive way. When I suggested long back, I think in one of meeting also in CM and CJ, we mentioned that one of the problem today we face it. You anybody can uh, today the defy anyone. Uh, I mean, like uh, social media is the print media is the electronic media is easy to tarnish in one's image, and it's difficult to go to court to address your grievance. We have to pay court fee of ten percent. So what ultimately would benefit standing in the queue of the court? So bar council had taken up one of the conversation. Even the law minister himself has told me one of the meeting in official meeting said he found when he has contested some uh, assembly election, he found it's difficult 
because people are defaming without any responsibility and accountability. For what? The reason is that nobody will be able to quote. So accessibility to the court is one issue. The um, um, pro, pro, protecting the interest of the nation or society is another issue. And in, may, may building an institution's credibility is another issue. So it is for the lawyers to take up all these courses. And I think you should not end up with the discussion merely based on uh, these two enactment. You may find flaws, you may find good things, but all what we have to do is make a more workable legislation in the future by our involvement. And you can collectively do that. And no one else can do that. Your association or any other association alone, I mean, can take up this kind of task. So I wish the organization all the best. Absolutely, I have no idea about new amendment except hearing this BNS, BSS, and BSA. Even I was discussing my chief justice day before yesterday because there was a program in Chennai day before yesterday where our chief justice has gone and attended. But uh, it's all about uh, the new act. But I feel, uh, I mean, shortly we have to organize a program in Kerala, especially for the judicial officers and judges uh, because we are totally uh, unaware of kind of amendment and implications. So we also need to go back to schools and learn again and again. So law is refreshing and it's like refreshing our mind. Uh, keep abreast with uh, changes and I wish uh, uh, all the best for the program and I once again I congratulate the team behind Sandosh, Tangachan and all the district I, uh, committee office bear as well. ILO. I don't know whether any other ILO, I often see it, uh, ILO Kanu is quite active in uh, all those organizing programs. Maybe I, I don't know, it might be ignorance, but anyway, I should congratulate uh, my own district uh, uh, union for uh, organizing this event. Thank you, Anandar. And I formally uh, declare that uh, this program is inaugurated. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, we are grateful for your reference about our association in the venture. And we have also made so many discussions in various platforms regarding the pros and cons of the amendments. So we will continue the same by inspiring your words, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. So next, I invite uh, Advocate K.K. Vijumar, sir, to address the gathering. Sir, please. Sir, I'm going to unmute you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, So, anyway, almost all persons are very familiar. And, uh, I think uh, all together there are uh, 99 Not 99, sir. Not 99. In YouTube, more than 30 persons are watching. So today we could not uh, top up the uh, platform. 196 Okay, no problem. Then my, my request is, uh, my request is uh, uh, those who are uh, attending this platform, please, uh, Switch on the video. Yes. Otherwise, uh, what will happen? Uh, I may not be able to identify you. Uh, in exceptional circumstances, you can uh, mute your video. Otherwise, please come on video. So you think that uh, if I am uh, I am muting my video, can you are you interested to attend the class? You may not be interest, interested to attend the class. So please, for one and a half hours. Please come on video. Uh, this is the usual practice in online classes. <laughs> Many of the participants are not able to come on video. I don't know uh, why why they are doing. <laughs> Wahida, you are uh, you are okay. Yes, now you are on uh, video. Uh, then Tadana Gumari, uh, all are all are familiar, <laughs> and uh, I am seeing uh, some more persons. Then uh, anyway, yeah, uh, we have heard uh, uh, Honorable uh, Justice 
Mother must have said words, and we have to keep it. And today, we are starting with a, a journey for 15 days to have a, a glance on a three newly introduced uh, statutes that is uh, known as uh, Tandor Sarsar. It is very difficult to pronounce <laughs> that uh, name. No, so, no, no, no meaning whether we call it uh, IPC, whether we, we call it VNS, uh, or uh, whether we call it uh, CRPC and we call it VNSs, uh, or whether it is uh, Indian Evidence Act or uh, VSA. It is not at all a matter. <laughs> because, because we should understand the, uh, what is the object. If I ask a question to you, I don't know how how you may be able to uh, answer it. See you. Uh, anyway, we are dealing with the Indian Penal Code. We know that. And we are dealing with the CRPC. And we are dealing with the evidence side. And now we are going from uh, 1st July onwards, so we are going to deal with, uh, in the place of IPC, we are going to deal with the uh, BNS. And in the place of uh, CRPC, we are going to deal with the BNSs and uh, in the place of uh, evidence set, uh, we are going to deal with the BS. What do you see? First of all, we should know what is the object, what is the object of Indian penal court or Bharatiya uh, Nyaya uh, Samhita, BNS. We, 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 we may have uh, uh, different 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 versions. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. Then, uh, 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 Wahida, Wahida, can you hear me? Can you say Hi. what is the object of Indian penal code? <laughs> not, not, anyway, we are every day we are dealing with Indian penal. Today, today also we have dealt with, uh, we have submitted before the court, but we don't know what is the object. And from July 1st onwards, we are going to deal with the BNS, Bharatiya Nyaya Samhita. Thank you. Uh, Shabana, madam, can you, what about you? Any idea? Sir, it is to, uh, it is to punish. punish. Okay, very good. Yes, it is to so punish. Commits one particular offense. Okay, very good. Okay, so this is, this is the view, of, the view of everybody. But I, I, I will say no. Yes, it is absolutely no. Tabana Mado, it is absolutely no. <laughs> because, because the ultimate object of uh, Indian Penal Code or BNS, uh, uh, that is welfare state. Welfare state. You think if this statute is not here, what will happen? So, total chaos, total calamity. We may not be able to live peaceably. <laughs> we may not be able to practice peaceably. It is very difficult. So, the prime object of uh, this uh, BNS is uh, whether we call it the uh, uh, when the new uh, statute introduced, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, so many. Uh, objections uh, and uh, uh, even uh, some of uh, were making strikes against this. But I don't, I am not able to follow that because uh, whatever we call, whether IPC or BNS, we should understand its object. Even though this name is not changed, we can continue to. Uh, Calling as the Indian Penal Code, no problem. We should understand what is the ultimate object of this statute. Okay. Anyway, I am not wasting the time because uh, uh, we have we have got uh, only short time, and uh, we have to cover all these three statutes uh, within fifteen days. And uh, 
so today we are going to make uh, have a, a comparative study of uh, uh, newly introduced statute uh, bharati and nyaya samhita and we are uh, making a comparison and also uh, there are uh, uh, so many new uh, offenses also are created uh, like uh, uh, terrorist terrorist act uh, uh, organized crime petty organized crime these are all newly incorporated offenses we are all uh, going to see that and uh, now we see bharatiya uh, nyaya samhita so earlier it was uh, called as the penal code uh, having altogether uh, uh, five eleven sections there were uh, five eleven provisions uh, in the uh, indian penal code but now it is reduced up to 358 now you can see only 358 provisions in the bharati uh, and nyaya samhita and uh, uh, if we go to uh, section number 1 section number 1 of bhartiya uh, nyaya samhita a section now 1 to 4 section 1 to sorry so section 1 to 5 of uh, indian penal code has been incorporated in the new statute bns uh, under section 1 in the old one 1 2 3 4 5 all these five sections are incorporated under section 1 of new samhita that is uh, the first change happened and the uh, under section 1 plus 3 in the indian penal code it was under section 2 that is regarding every person has to be punished liable to be punished if the offense is committed and when we come to uh, section 1 clause 4 that is uh, section 3 of the old statute section 3 of the old statute that uh, that is uh, if a, a person who has uh, committed an offense beyond india he is also liable to be punished as he has committed the an offense in india and uh, uh, coming to section 1 cross 5 uh, we can see that uh, section 4 of the uh, old act that is uh, extraterritorial jurisdiction in the old uh, indian penal code section 4 was uh, dealing with uh, extraterritorial jurisdiction and that is uh, now incorporated under section 15 and uh, in the old statute there was a uh, section 5 saving clause saving clause was under section 5 now it is incorporated under section 16 so on that aspect up to section 125 of old act now it is incorporated under section 1 of the present act there is no much change all are similar so in the place of in the place of section 125 you have to look at only section 1 clause 6 up to 1 to clause 1 to 6 that is only the change as far as uh, section 1 is concerned uh, in the present Dilla. statute bharatiya nyaya samhita i think uh, all are comfortable hello sir ramendra sir yes, yes sir, comfortable sir. comfortable, yes, comfortable sir. Sir. Yes, sir yes we are comfortable okay yes 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 now we come to now we come to the definition part definition part of the present samhita section 2 so section 2 covers almost section 6 to 50 of indian penal code section 
section 2 of the bharatiya nyaya samhita covers almost section 6 to 50 of indian penal code that means if we see what is an act what is an act act is defined under section 33 of the old act act is defined under section 33 of old act now it is defined under section 21 appo act ennu parayna aa oru act pare act endanu indian penal code act endanu ennu parayna baalo padayile section 33 laanu parayirunnathu ippo adu section 21 il erpidithu sir there are persons from outside state also yes okay 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 so 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 please please okay, i can speak okay, okay. yes I, I remember Mr. One Kajal. One Kajal is here. Kajal from Mr. Kajal. Kajal Muhammad. Yes, Kajal right. from, uh, yes sir. Yes, sir. I am Kajal Moidin, sir. Yes, sir. I am hey, Kajal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you are here. Okay, very good. Yeah. Yes. Thank I you, have not seen you. You may, Thank you. you may come on video. Otherwise, I, I may not be able to identify you because. Yes, sir. I will come, I will come soon. Sir. Phone. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, then Arunima, you are comfortable. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Arunima. Okay, okay. Very good. Then Arunima, you are comfortable. Yes, sir. Yes. Then see, see, then we will go through all these uh, definitions uh, very quickly. Uh, then the uh, second definition under section uh, under the present act that is section two two that is animal. That 47 of the old act. Animals are not the Then, uh, coming to section 2.3, it is a new provision. Section 2.3 is a new provision because uh, child, child is not defined in the Indian Penal Code. Child was not defined in the Indian Penal Code, but uh, in the present statute, DNS, child is defined uh, as a uh, any person below the age of 18 years is known as child as per section 2, 3. And coming to the next definition, that is a counterfeit. Counterfeit. You know the meaning of counterfeit. I am not explaining much. Counterfeit is defined under section 2, 4 in the present act, but it was under section 28 in the Indian Penal Code. In the penal code, section 28 was defining what is the meaning of counterfeit. And coming to uh, next definition, uh, section 25, court. Court is, court is defined in the present act under section 25, uh, but uh, it was uh, in the old act, it was under section 20. Uh, we need not to explain much about all those things. And uh, uh, the term death, death is defined. In the new statutes under section 26, in the new statute under section 26, death is defined, uh, but uh, in the old one, it is uh, under section 46. Hello. And uh, now, now we see dishonesty. Dishonesty is very important, very important as far as Indian Penal Code is concerned. This The term dishonesty was uh, defined uh, under section uh, under section. 24. The term dishonestly was uh, defined under section 24 of Indian Penal Code. Now it is defined uh, under section uh, 27. Dishonestly. That is, you see, dishonestly has very important uh, meaning uh, under Indian Penal Code. Uh, it is not having the real meaning as we use as dishonestly, but uh, here it is stated as a, a person who is doing anything with the intention of causing wrongful gain or wrongful loss. A person doing any act with the intention to cause a wrongful gain or wrongful loss to a person is known as doing an act dishonestly. It is defined under section 27 of the present act. Earlier, it was under section 24. And the document.
document is uh, important because uh, now and the definition of uh, document the uh, even the uh, electronic and digital records also are incorporated in the definition of document that is stated under section 28 it is defined under section 28 of the present act and earlier it was under section 29 Earlier in the, in the Indian Penal Code, it was defined, document was defined under section 29, now it is 28. And the next definition, that is the fraudulently, that is also very important in the Indian Penal Code and also in BNS. And in BNS, fraudulently is because you see that, uh, uh, especially new lawyers, junior lawyers, all these uh, technical terms should be studied without uh, understanding the real meaning of these uh, terms. We may not be able to follow Indian penal code uh, because uh, dishonestly, dishonestly, we know what is a dishonest. What is the meaning? General meaning of dishonest, but that is not the meaning in Indian penal code. So we should understand all those words. That is why I am. Uh, Emphasizing much on the definition part. Then term fraudulently. Fraudulently is defined under section 29. Fraudulently is defined the under section 29. In the old act, it is under section 25. And what is the meaning of fraudulently? Doing anything with intention to defraud, not otherwise. If you are doing any act to defraud a person, it is known as that act is known as doing an act fraudulently. And next definition, that is section 10, gender. Gender, 210. Section 210 says about gender. You see, in the old Indian period code, it was stated in section 8. But under section 8, there in the definition of gender, only male and female were the but uh, now, transgender is also incorporated. The term gender under section 210 of BNS, not only male, female, but also transgender. Transgender is also incorporated. And uh, coming to next definition, that is good faith. You know good faith? And the good faith is defined under section 211 of present act. And the, in the old act, it is under section 52. In the old act, it is under section 52, good faith. And the, uh, next is the government. Government is uh, defined under section 212. And the, in the old one, it is, uh, it is under section uh, 70. Government was defined. And the, next is the uh, harbor. What is the meaning of harbor? Harbor. Now it is defined under section 230 and in the Indian Penal Code, it is under section 53 capital A. The term harbor is harboring. That is very important the term under Indian Penal Code, harboring an offender, harboring, harboring the absconder. Everything is there. It is punishable offense and it is coming under section 230. Earlier it was under section 52 capital A. And the next is very important the definition, that is the injury. You know, Indian Penal Code, injury is very important. And injury is defined under Section 214. Injury is defined under Section 214 of BNS. Earlier, it was under Section 44. Earlier, it was under Section 44. What, do you mean, what is the meaning of injury? What is the meaning of uh, injury? Anonima, can you say? Sir, any harm, uh, whatever ah. illegal due to any person. Ah, yes, very good, very good. You have studied it. Okay. Okay. No. okay. Any harm uh, illegally caused to a person that is uh, not only bodily, but also mentally and also reputation or property. All those are coming. Injury doesn't mean 
injury to body alone no it is a mental injury bodily injury then uh, reputation and the also property all these are coming it is defined under section 214 in the present act and the, in the old one it was under section 44 and the next definition is illegal the term illegal the term illegal is defined under the present act under section 215 now it is defined under section 215 all these terms are very important 215 and earlier it was uh, under section 43 and the, the term judge is also defined here section 216 section 216 of uh, bns uh, defines uh, judge earlier it was under section 19 and the, the term life is defined under section uh, 217 of bns section 217 defines life earlier it was under section 45 so life means life of human being alone in indian penal code the life means life of human being alone and coming to next definition local law that is uh, defined under section 218 at present and earlier it was under section 42 and the man is also defined under section 290 earlier it was under section 10 and the next uh, definition that is uh, month month and year 220 section 220 defines month and year earlier it was under section 49 you see there is a change under the present statute under bns so earlier month and year were calculated on the basis of british calendar in the case of indian penal code month and year that was calculated on the basis of a, a british calendar and now it is on the basis of gregorian calendar in the place of british calendar so we are giving a total change <laughs> i don't know to what extent all those things happens because uh, almost all statute statutory provisions are uh, uh, belonging to indian penal code uh, except to certain changes uh, but uh, that uh, uh, time is uh, removed british calendar is removed in the place of british calendar gregorian calendar is introduced under section 220 and uh, definition of uh, movable property that is 221 in the present act earlier it was under section 22 and the, the term number is also defined number number is also defined under section 222 in the old statute it was it was under section 9 and the, the term oath oath is also defined under indian uh, under indian penal code indian penal code it was under section 51 now it is under section 223 and what is an offense what is an offense <laughs> you know we lawyer we are all practicing lawyers and uh, if we ask uh, if, if we ask uh, uh, what is offense any wrong fact any wrong fact Yes. Okay. Very good, sir. Any wrongful act. That means, uh, as per uh, BNS, offence is defined under Section two twenty four. Offence is defined under Section two twenty four. Earlier, it was under Section forty. It is offence means uh, a thing made punishable under the section. Yeah. What? What? Or maybe everything made punishable. Everything made punishable. Under this sanction, is not an offence. So we are not able to uh, say particular act is an offence. 
no what samhita says what vns says or what the indian penal code said a particular act amounts to an offense that only that alone comes under the definition of offense now it is defined under section 224 earlier it was under section 40 and uh, omission the term omission is also omission is also come under the definition of an offense omission act or omission act or omission they are offense and omission is defined under new samkhita it is a uh, uh, two 25 earlier it was it was under section 33 and the person is defined person is defined the in the present statute under section 226 earlier it was under section 11 and the, the term public is also uh, defined the under section 227 earlier it was under section 12 and public servant is also defined in the present act that is under section 228 earlier it was under section 21 then here you have to uh, you have to look at a particular point that is uh, under the under the under the definition of public servant even uh, arbitrator even an arbitrator is coming under the definition of public public servant an arbitrator who is the uh, appointed by the court or uh, a competent public authority comes under the definition of public servant it is defined uh, under section 228 earlier it was under section 21 <laughs> and uh, another uh, another important definition that is uh, uh, in indian penal code uh, whenever sir we can't hear you sir we can't hear you sir na mic mute aidna sir sir na mic mute aidna sir na unmute you sir sir na unmute you sir please yes ah, yes okay yes 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 now you can hear me yes 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 you see see you uh, see reason to believe this is a particular word we we see in almost all uh, definitions of offense reason to believe what is the meaning of reason to believe reason to believe is defined under section 229 a person is said to have reason to believe a thing if he has sufficient cause to believe if we have so when we have reason to believe means we have sufficient cause we should have sufficient cause to believe that such a person has uh, committed the offense such a person has uh, done the act that is the meaning of reason to believe that means uh, without a sufficient cause we cannot say that we have reason to believe that he has committed the offense that is the importance of that definition reason to believe it is defined under section 229 and In the Indian Penal Code, it was under Section 26, and the next is uh, Section 230, that is the Special Law. You know Special Law. In the Indian Penal Code, it was defined under Section 2041, and the uh, uh, Valuable Security, that is uh, 231. Earlier, it was under Section 30, and the vessel is also defined. Vessel, the vessel is defined under Section 232 to at present. earlier it was under section 48 vessel section 48 was uh, defining the term vessel and uh, another important very important uh, uh, definition that is uh, voluntarily you know when we are appearing for an accuse before the magistrate court we know we know that uh, uh, maybe offense may be uh, 223 220 224 226 etc etc so all those uh, cases we can see voluntarily causing voluntarily causing hurt voluntarily attacking what is the meaning of voluntarily 
section 213 sorry section 233 section 233 in the bns defines the term voluntarily earlier it was under section 39 in the indian penal code it is defined it was defining under section 39 voluntarily means when a person causes an act that he intended to cause a person who intend intend to cause it a person who has intend to cause it is if that act is done intentionally it is known as causing voluntarily and he is doing an act knowingly no, not only intentionally but also knowingly knowingly that this will cause injury to him that term is known as voluntarily now it is defined under section 233 and in the indian penal code it is uh, uh, under section 39 and the section 30 uh, 234 will is defined uh, earlier indian penal code it was under section 31 and uh, now 230 235 235 defines woman 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 means a female person at any age earlier it was under section 10 so in earlier in the indian penal code section 10 was defining both men and women under section 10 now man is defined under section 290 and woman is uh, defined under section 235 and uh, another important uh, definition you have to look at uh, that is a uh, wrongful gain wrongful loss and gaining wrongfully or gaining losing wrongfully these are very important definition that is a uh, earlier in the indian penal code wrongful gain wrongful loss gaining wrongfully losing wrongfully all those are defined under section 23 but now it is defined under section 236 237 and 238 what is the this is very important because uh, without uh, understanding the uh, not to literally meaning but the meaning under bns or meaning under indian penal code that is very important wrongful gain wrongful gain means uh, a person who gain by unlawful means a person who is uh, gaining unlawfully to which he is not entitled a person who is gaining something unlawfully to which he is not entitled a person who is not entitled to get it but he is trying to gain it it is known as wrongful gain now it is different under section 236 earlier it was under section 23 and wrongful loss wrongful loss means losing something by way of unlawful means which he is legally entitled a person who is lose something which he is legally entitled a person lose losing something of which he is legally entitled but losing something and that losing is the unlawful it is known as wrongful loss and the term gaining wrongfully and losing wrongfully it is defined under section 238 at present earlier it was under section 23 and a person uh, gaining wrongfully means after making the wrongful gain he is retaining a person after wrongfully gained a property wrongfully gained a property of which he is not entitled and retaining it when he is retaining it it is known as gaining wrongfully 
Similarly, closing wrongfully also. It is defined under section 238. Earlier, it was under section 23. And the last definition part, that is uh, uh, 239. 239. That means uh, there is a new a new provision, 239. That means uh, every the words and expressions made under this uh, Sankhita, not defined here, but uh, all the expressions shall have the meaning respectively in the Information Technology Act. That means anything not defined here, but defined in Technology Act, Information Technology Act, that will prevail here also. So all these are important definition part. And the, now we have completed up to uh, the old statute up to uh, section uh, uh, 50. Okay. All these are uh, important uh, definitions uh, you have to keep in your mind. And these are the changes happened. That means almost uh, uh, 50, sections, 50 sections in the old statute brought under one section. That is a change. Okay. And uh, now we go to another uh, uh, important section uh, at present, section 3. Section 3 of uh, uh, BNS. Section 3 of BNS, it is relating to earlier Indian Penal Code, section 34 to 30. Section 34 to 38. That means Section 3 1. Section 3 1 is a covering Section 34 to 38 of Indian Penal. It is only it is only a general explanation. And uh, now section three two three two. It was uh, earlier. It was under section seven. In the Indian Penal Code. It was under section seven. Now it is uh, incorporated under section three two. And. Uh, Section 3, 3, Section 3, 3. Earlier it was uh, under Section 27. Although all those are not, uh, not at all uh, much important. That is why I am not explaining all those things. Anyway, that is a change happened. I am pointing out that. And uh, another uh, important uh, point that is, uh, you know that, uh, uh, If, uh, when we are appearing for the accused before the trial court, uh, uh, all two there are five accused. We know that uh, uh, accused capital offense uh, under uh, uh, section 30, uh, uh, 324, 326 uh, of Indian Penal Code read with section 34. You know that. Section 34 is a very uh, important provision we uh, <laughs> remember. Eh? That is a uh, uh, common object, common intention. Common intention is very important as far as Indian Penal Code is concerned. We never forget Section 34, but uh, now we are losing that Section 34. In the place of Section 34, we have to read Section uh, uh, 3 5. Section 3 5. So from July 1st onwards, we will see. The charge made by the police officers, records made by the police officers, they will write in the place of section 34, they will write section 3 5. Common intention, that you know. Any criminal act is a criminal act is done 
by several persons in furtherance of common intention. That you, you know, I need not explain much. You know that common intention. A person, uh, two or more persons doing an act in furtherance of common intention. And if that act is done, all those persons are, all those persons who have participated in the uh, common, in furtherance of common intention, may be punished. That is the importance of section 34 in the earlier act. Now, we cannot see section 34. Now we have to see section 3, 5. And now we come to section uh, uh, 3, 6. 3, 6. That is uh, section 35. And uh, 3, 7. Section 36. 36. And the uh, 3, 7, 3, 8. All the statute, section 37. And the uh, uh, 3, 9. 3, 9. Section 38. So, under uh, section 3, important material point you have to keep in your mind is that uh, section 34. Common intention. Common intention is uh, defined under section 3, 5 in the place of section 34. It takes some time. Yes. Sir, so, sir, one doubt. Yes. yes. Uh, what is the corresponding section of 3, 1 in Pardon? IPC? Three, uh, what is the corresponding section in yes. 3, 1? So, 4, 3, 1. What is IP, IPC offense? What is the, uh, what is the three, section three, in IPC? 3 1. 3 3 1. 3 1 is newly incorporated. 3 1 is newly incorporated. So, what is the, the, any, any, corres, any corresponding section in IPC? No. No. 3 1 first. 3, uh, three 1 is incorporated at present. Yes. And below that, all the, all the provisions are incorporated. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. See, these are all relating to definitions and uh, general explanations. And uh, now we come to uh, next uh, very important uh, uh, point, uh, Chapter 2. Chapter 2 of BNS. Uh, uh, chapter 2 of BNS. In the Indian Penal Code, it was under Chapter 3. Punishments. You see, what are the punishments? In the Indian Penal Code, Section 53 to 75. In the Indian Penal Code, Section 53 to 75. We are coming under, under Chapter 3. Now, Section 4 to 30. Now, Section 4 to 30, Chapter 2. In the place of chapter 3, chapter 2, and in the place of section 70, 53 to 75, section 4 to 13. And another important point, what are the punishments? Section 4, earlier it was section 53. Now it is section 4, earlier it was section 53, punishments. You see that a new punishment is incorporated, that is, earlier there are altogether Seven, punish, seven types of punishments. Now, it is only six, six types of punishments, not seven. And a new punishment is also incorporated, that is a community service. All other, of, all other punishments are similar to Indian Penal Code. Now, a new punishment is also incorporated. It is known as community service. And now, section 5, commutation of sentence. Earlier it was under section 54. You know that, everybody knows that, how commuted. 
appropriate government can commute the punishment. So converting one one sentence into another, that you know, commutation. The commutation commutation was being done under section fifty four in LPC. Now it is under section five. And uh, fractions of times of punishment, fractions of times of punishment uh, being calculated. Earlier it was under section fifty seven. Now it is under section six. That means. Uh, a life in, you you know you know what is the meaning of life imprisonment that is the fractions of uh, imprisonment fractions of terms of imprisonment means what is the meaning of life imprisonment meaning of life imprisonment means for if we, if we are calculating it in fractional it is for 20 years unless otherwise provided unless otherwise provided if life imprisonment is given It is up to twenty years, and now we know that uh, new provisions are incorporated. What can grant the punishment, life imprisonment, for remainder of the life? There are provisions that we are going to see. There are different provisions. Even what can grant the life imprisonment for the remainder of the life? And uh, coming to section seven. In the place of section seven earlier, it was section sixty. That means the sentence. How court can pass the sentence? Sentence can be either rigorous or simple. Court can grant rigorous imprisonment or court can grant simple imprisonment on the basis of the gravity of the offence. That is stated under section seven. Now earlier it was under section sixty. And now we see regarding fine. That you know that is very important. You know that we know that fine is imposed. Court will pass punishment, imprisonment as well as fine. And in the judgment, court will say that in default of payment of fine, he has to undergo imprisonment. This is this is known as default imprisonment. Earlier in the Indian Penal Code, it all these things were stated under Section 63 to 70. Section 63 to 70, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, and 70. These sections were explaining about a payment of fine. Default imprisonment. What is the limitation period of fine, etc., etc. Now, all these sections, section sixty-three to seventy, were incorporated under one section, that is section eight. Now, section eight of BNS deal with all the provisions relating to imposing fine, default imprisonment. What is the Extent of default imprisonment. What is the limitation period of uh, recovering uh, fine amount? All those things are stated under Section Eight of the BNS. Earlier it was under Section Sixty Three to Seventy. And now we see Section Eight One. Earlier it was under Section Sixty Three. Earlier it was under section sixty three. Now it is uh, under section eight one. That is the uh, where no sum is expressed. It is stated that if the the fine amount is uh, uh, sum is not expressed, the amount of fine can be even unlimited, but it shall not be excessive. Court is having power to, if it is not limited, fine is not limited. Court is having ample power to impose unlimited amount of fine, but it should not be excessive. That is what section eight says. Eight one says. Earlier it was under section sixty three. And coming to section eight two, 
now 82 in the indian penal code it was under section 64 what can pass a imprisonment along with the fine and the what is having ample power to impose fine even without imprisonment. So, what is having power to impose uh, fine along with imprisonment or what can uh, impose fine even without imprisonment. And when the court is directing default imprisonment, suppose the court is imposing 5,000 rupees fine, in default, the court can grant the uh, imprisonment, and that default imprisonment shall not exceed, that is a condition, default imprisonment shall not exceed one fourth, one fourth of the term of imprisonment for the offence fixed by the statute. So, default imprisonment shall not exceed one fourth of the maximum imprisonment. That is stated under section 83. Earlier it was under section 65. That is very important. Especially those who are appearing for judicial service exam. DJ or Munsi Maishet. That is very important. And now we come to section 8.4. You see, there is a, a, a change that is brought in the earlier section 66. Now it is section 8.4. Earlier it was section 66. Imprisonment which is called imposes in default of payment of fine. That alone was under section 66. But in the new statute, in default of community service, that means court can, court can impose default imprisonment not only in default of fine, but also in default of community service. So, court directed a person, an accused person, to do some community service as a punishment. He is committing default. Court can order default imprisonment. So that is a change brought in the new Sankhida. That is a 8.4. Earlier it was under section 66. And section 8.5. Section 8.5. That is also dealing with imprisonment. Default imprisonment shall not be rigorous. Default imprisonment shall be simple. Court can pass imprisonment, rigorous imprisonment for the offense committed, but in the case of default imprisonment, court can pass only simple imprisonment. That is stated under section 8.5. Earlier it was under section 67. Here also, default of community service also incorporated. And under section 67, earlier it was under section 67, now it is under 8.5. Another drastic change, another drastic change. That means how default imprisonment can be granted. Default imprisonment can be granted for two months. If the Fine amount does not exceed 5,000 rupees at present. Earlier it was, it was 50 rupees. Now it is 5,000 rupees. So in the case of fine amount not exceeding 5,000 rupees, default imprisonment can be granted up to two months. And if the default fine amount does not exceed 10,000 rupees, Default imprisonment not to be 
exceeded four months. That means if the amount is five thousand, two months. If the amount is ten thousand, four months. And maximum period of default imprisonment that is up to one year. That means whatever may be the amount, whatever may be the amount of fine, default imprisonment shall not exceed one year. And that should be simple imprisonment also. All these are stated under section. Eight five. Earlier it was under section sixty seven. What what another important thing is that default imprisonment, the de default imprisonment will be terminated when the fine is paid. That is stated under section eight six. Earlier it was under section sixty eight. So. You see that that is that is a that is a crucial point. Especially lawyers are very much should be very much vigilant regarding that. Suppose uh, an accused person we are appearing for them, uh, he was convicted uh, and directed to pay ten thousand rupees or one lakh rupees as fine within three months. Within three months, okay. And after that, uh, our party got outside, not turning up. So in the judgment, it is clearly stated that accused is directed to pay one lakh rupees as fine within three months. Okay, not paid, and he comes back after ten uh, years. At that time, warrant will be issued, police will be approaching. At that time, he will come to you. Ask sir, what will you do? Then, oh, going through the judgment, sometimes you will say, oh, it is very difficult because it is to be uh, finished to be uh, paid within three months. Now ten years over. No, 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 no. It is very difficult. Uh, we cannot say. We cannot approach the court. No, don't worry. Don't worry. It is a settled the law. Court cannot do anything because when the fine is paid, uh, default imprisonment is. Being terminated, irrespective of the period of time, fixed by the court. Whenever, so that is very clear. It is very clearly stated in section eight six. Earlier, it was under section sixty eight. And one more thing, one more thing, you can see under section eight uh, six b, a and b the six a and b. And B, that is, if you are making the payment partly, default imprisonment also can be undergone partly. For example, so see you one lakh rupees imposed as fine. Your party is paying and in default two months imprisonment. Your party is paying fifty thousand rupees. Then he has to undergo imprisonment only for one month. Proportionate to the amount. Clear? That is also allowed. That is also allowed as per section eight six. Earlier it was under section sixty eight and sixty nine. And another important point you have to keep in your mind: death of the accuser does not discharge from blame. Suppose an accuser who has imposed the fine he is no more. But he is not uh, discharged from the liability. Fine can be recovered from his property. That is as per section eight seven. Earlier it was under section seven D. Earlier it was under section seven D. Now it is under section eight seven. And another point that you have to keep in your mind: under section seventy eight seven, that is a maximum period six years. So suppose fine is imposed, suppose fine is imposed, fine is imposed, 
that file will be lapsed recovery cannot be made after 6 months 6 years so period for recovering the file is 6 years that is stated under section 87 and one more thing one more thing suppose the substantial punishment imprisonment that is exceeding 6 years so recovery can be made after that period for example an accused who has punished for 10 years and uh, imposter 2 lakhs rupees has fined then that fine can be recovered within 10 years not 6 years okay normal case maximum period is 6 years and the imprisonment period is the uh, exceeding the 6 years that period is uh, the time period for recovering the fine amount clear all these are coming under recovery of fine amount that is very important and uh, section 9 and 10 you just uh, i am ignoring that uh, earlier it was under section 71 and 72 and uh, now we come to so now section 9 and 10 earlier indian penal code 71 9 was 71 and the 10 was 72 and now we go to next important point that is a solitary confinement that is very important solitary confinement section 11 section 11 12 solitary confinement that is a, earlier it was in the, in the indian penal code section 73 and section 74 now section 11 corresponding section 73 solitary confinement you know that when a court is imposing rigorous imprisonment when a court is imposing rigorous imprisonment so solitary confinement can be given only in the case of court is granting rigorous imprisonment now section 11 deals with the section 11 of bns deals with the rigorous solitary confinement earlier it was under section 73 of indian penal code and only in the case of rigorous imprisonment court can impose solitary confinement and period of solitary confinement that means uh, in the case of 6 months imprisonment six court is awarding 6 months rigorous imprisonment court can grant only 1 month solitary confinement the court is awarding 6 months imprisonment rigorous imprisonment to an accused the court can grant only 1 month solitary confinement not beyond that and the court is imposing 1 year rigorous imprisonment court is imposing 1 year rigorous imprisonment court can impose solitary confinement only 2 months not beyond that i mean the case of 6 months 1 month in the case of one year two months and uh, above one year suppose the imprisonment is granted above one year for for example life imprisonment granted even if life imprisonment is granted maximum period of solitary confinement is 3 months beyond that nobody can be detained in solitary confinement okay and uh, now there is some restriction regarding uh, giving solitary confinement also that means even though court is uh, uh, imposed an imprisonment for 5 years to an accused rigorous imprisonment for 5 years then court can uh, uh, direct the accused to undergo 3 months solitary confinement no accused no convict can be undergone solitary confinement for 3 months continuously it is not allowed there is some restriction that means uh, that is stated under section 12 12 of bns earlier it was under section 74 see suppose uh, solitary confinement is uh, below 3 months 
continuous period of uh, solitary confinement is uh, seven days. Seven days will be given solitary confinement. After that, seven days interval should be given. Okay. Then again, seven days solitary confinement can be granted. That is in the case of duration of solitary confinement is less than three months. And in all other cases, in all other cases, solitary confinement shall not be exceeding 14 days. Continuous 14 days can, suppose a person is uh, imprison, granted imprisonment for 5 years, rigorous imprisonment, he can be detained in solitary confinement for 3 months. Okay. And in that 3 months, he can be confined solitarily, not continuously for 30 days, uh, 3 months. It can be given 14 days, 14 days. First 14 days given, then 14 days interval. Then again 14 days can be given. By way of doing that, 33 months solitary confinement can be completed. Here, these are the restrictions provided under section 12 of DNS. Earlier it was section 74. These are all relating to solitary confinement under section 11 and 12. You know that? Solitary confinement is the most important the tool to refine a person. To refine a person. You know that. What is the effect of solitary confinement? Can, 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 can we remain one hour without seeing another human being? <laughs> is it possible? You know, sir? Is it possible? <laughs> this is not no, possible. Sir. No, yes. sir. We are not, we are, yes, we are, like not, human. Not, yeah, even half an hour, we are not able to uh, uh, sit uh, uh, alone. You see, solitary confinement, not able to see any person in a room. One hall is there, food will be provided, nobody will be seen. Even sunlight, may not be able to see. see horrible. It is very difficult. That is why all these restrictions are incorporated. And then, now we see uh, section, all the sections, section 75, now 30. Uh, we, I am leaving it that. And now we come to, we have completed chapter 2 also. Chapter 2, we have seen uh, that is a uh, uh, fine solitary confinement, etc. Now we go to chapter 3. Chapter 3. Earlier it was under chapter 4. That is very important. General exceptions. General exceptions. Why? Why general exceptions? You know that general exceptions and the private defense. Earlier, general exception and the private defense in the Indian Penal Code, those are stated under section 76 to 106. In the old act, in the old Indian Penal Code, under chapter 6, uh, sorry, chapter 4, in the old statute, under chapter 4, section 76 to 101, section 76 to 101, That you are dealing with the general exceptions. And section 102 to 106. That you are dealing with the private defense. Now, now, general exceptions are covering under section 14 to 33. Under BNS, general exceptions are covering under section 14 to 33. And private defense, private defense, section 34 to 44, section 34 to 44. 
Yes, okay. Then uh, before that, you have to see why, why, why this, <laughs> why this uh, uh, general exceptions uh, and the uh, uh, general exceptions and uh, uh, private defense. Why? Why it is uh, uh, clearly uh, clearly incorporated uh, under Indian Penal Code? Why it is? Vahida, can you say? Any idea? Why private defense? Why uh, general exception? Private defense number that academic come on the other side. That is no, that is no. Why? Why it is? Why it is in Indian Penal Code? Or why it is BNS? General exception, you see that? General exception. Can you imagine? Can you imagine without this general exception? A judge can discharge to, to duty. Sir, to, sir, to legalize yes. the legalize some offenses. Legalize some offenses. Okay, sir. Then my, my question is uh, my question is uh, why it is? What you said is absolutely right, but why it is? To save our, it our is to save our life. Okay, sir. Why? <laughs> why? Why? Why, sir? Otherwise, they will be. Otherwise, their judge will be penalized. Okay, sir. But you see, you see. Suppose, you see. Suppose general exception is not here. What will be the condition? Whether a police officer can discharge their duty without fear? For no. Something about voluntary acts. Yeah. Yes, sir. See, sir, a police officer. They, they are uh, they are being commanded to fire at the mob. They will fire, and they are thinking that oh, when they are firing, when they are firing, one or three will be a imposter. One or three new act, BNS. We not to wait. <laughs> we not to go. On. We not to go. On. We not to go. On. Now July first onwards, one or three. In the place of three not to one or three comes. Okay. So whether a police officer can discharge their duty without fear? No. It is not possible. Can a judge, a judge discharge duty without fear? No. That is why, that is why general exceptions are here. Whether a doctor, a doctor can act without fear? No. That is why general exceptions are here. Because some persons discharging their duties, while discharging their duties, sometimes injury may happen. Body injury may happen. Death may occur. All this may happen. For that, they cannot be penalized. They cannot be penalized. A soldier Suppose if this general exception is not here, can a soldier discharge his duty in our boundary? No. So this is, this is very important. This is very crucial. General exceptions are here. May make your suspicion. In order to in, the, in order to avoid any other harm. Yes. Okay, sir. You see, so the, this, uh, this is the purpose of general exception. Now, now coming to private defense. Now, now we come. When then, what is the what is the purpose that, that of? Is, is, I, yes, sir. Please, I am not following you. Please, hello, sir. Please tell me. That is under section ninety-six, sir. Hello. Yes. yes. Tell me, sir. What is your doubt? Hello. As per the and corresponding with section eighty-two of IPC and yeah. Tell me. Section eighty-two IPC. Dollar income tax. But regarding 82, another half submitted any offense, 
as per section 82 and corresponding section 96, which, which are the both sections. Uh, sir, okay, sir, I know that. That is no low income tax. We are coming to all those. We are coming to. You are stating about uh, uh, no low income tax. No, or avoided uh, a, a, a child who is committing an offense is not an offense. That is section 82. Uh, a child below the age of seven years cannot commit an offence. No offence at all. Uh, those, the, all those are coming under general exception, sir. Here we are dealing with the, what is the object of general exception and coming to uh, private defence. Now we now we see the object of general exception. Then what is the object of uh, private defence? It is also having certain object. What is the object? Private defence to protect your body. To protect your property, to protect uh, others' body, to protect uh, others' property. Why? That is uh, that is based on the concept of welfare state. What is the meaning of welfare state? Meaning of welfare state is that everybody should be protected. Everybody should be protected. Everybody's property should be protected. Everybody's person should be protected. Then can uh, can our state? Can our state government give protection to everybody? Oh, 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 what will be the situation? Whether we have that much wealth to give police protection to everybody? It is not possible. It is not possible. At the same time, everybody should be protected. Because of that, because of that intention, because of that object, private defense is given. That means, suppose your body is in danger, you are apprehending, you are apprehending attack, you can defend. Or if you are seeing that a lady is being attacked, a lady is being attacked, you can definitely kill that person as a private defense. That is the object of general exception as well as private defense. Earlier, in the Indian Penal Code, Chapter 4, Section 76 to 106, both the general exception and private defense. Now, it is coming under Section 14 to 33, general exception, and Section 34 to 44 as a private defense. And now we come to, shall we continue? Thank you, sir. Now it is nine o'clock, sir. Okay. I think so better, we we can continue, better we can better we can continue tomorrow. Oh, so we can continue tomorrow. Anyway, That's I better. can ask. I, I can clarify yes. some point to you. Yes, anyway, yes, yes. anyway, every day is comfortable. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sujit, Sujit, Sujit. You are not seen. Where where were you? <laughs> no, I, yes, sir. I just. Okay, yes, yes. okay, okay, Sujit. Yes. Okay, okay. Anyway, yeah. all are comfortable? Yes, comfortable? Yes, sir. comfortable? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Any difficulty you may please convey to me. And yes, uh, uh, Sujit, what do you say? Yes, sir. Definitely we need to What about Vinod, sir? Vinod, sir? Ah, okay, comfortable. Sir. Comfortable. Okay, comfortable. okay, okay yes. sir. Sir, okay, we have already, so we can continue we have, tomorrow, Sandar sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. We have already we upgraded our Zoom tomorrow. platform, sir. Already upgraded so that. Uh, okay, tomorrow. we will continue tomorrow. We will tomorrow. continue tomorrow at seven thirty. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. 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 Thank so tomorrow you cannot you need not lay up on the YouTube. You can straight away come to the Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. But the Zoom platform will be same. Yes, yes, platform will be same. No upgrade, upgrade. No, we are yeah. upgraded to five hundred so that uh, yes, up to yes. five hundred uh, no, persons can, person can join. Okay. Okay, we can see tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Denny. Good start. Good start.